the Klaxith battle group exited warp, their fleet of warships bearing down on the planet designated Sonu 314, or Nexus, as the human colonists below had nicknamed it. That reports indicated a standard colony world. Breathable atmosphere, abundant plant, and simple animal life, unremarkable mineral composition. The Klaxith were only interested in one resource, Slay, and Nexus proved an ideal target, given those initial survey findings showing no indigenous sentient species, nor any major human presence. Deploy your forces, commanded Overlord Zerk from the bridge of the Dreadnought Malevolence. Secure the landing zones for our labor battalions. I want those mining complexes and factories operational within two cycles. From the flanks of each capital ship, assault craft streaked towards the surface. Zerk monitored the steady progress of troop deployment on tactical displays, soon dotted with thousands of biosigns as squads dispersed to stake their empires. It was a textbook invasion. Almost too easy, Zark mused. The first alarms blared when the biosign markers for squad 341 and 397 flatlined without warning. Zerk bolted upright, tromping over to the sensor station for answers. What happened? Report. He bellowed at the unfortunate technician. Unknown, overlord, they simply disappeared. No distress signals or communications. All vitals instantly terminated. Lifeform casualties verified. Another officer called out crisply. Squad 397 eliminated. 341 down to two troopers. Even as Zerk turned towards him, that count dropped again. Make that one tr Squads 125 and 212 gone. 831 and 517 taking heavy losses. Zerk listened in stunned disbelief as casualty updates continued flooding the bridge. An entire platoon wiped out here. Another two squads vanished without trace. Everywhere across Nexus, his legions were being rapidly extinguished. How? Rage simmered in his throat sacks. They had absolute aerial superiority. What indigenous force could be visiting such devastation upon his veteran warriors? Pull our forces back to secure drop zones and get me sensor sweeps on what's killing my troops. Zark roared. Perhaps some cloaked orbital weapon system was intercepting his ships. But endless diagnostic showed nothing penetrating their shields. Whatever was massacring, hundreds of Klaxith boots on ground seemed untraceable through technological means. The death toll mounted. Zerk became increasingly desperate and afraid. For all their steadfast might, the Klaxith had never witnessed such an unrelenting rout. The Nexus went deathly quiet. No more frantic casualty reports. No reactive fire from engaged squads. Just ominous silence. Zerk checked displays. Nearly the entirety of their 3,000 ground troops had been neutralized. Only a scattering of biomarkers remained clustered around the few intact transports still awaiting terrified survivors. This conquest has failed, Zerk rasp in disbelief. All units are ordered to evacuate. A thunderous explosion cut him off. One of the dropships had just erupted in a fiery detonation. Then another, and another. In less than a minute, every evacuation point was annihilated. Almost no Klaxith life signs now remained on the surface. Nexus seemed nearly scoured. Zerk stood aghast at the unprecedented scale of the calamity. They still hadn't even confirmed what or who was responsible. As bridge officers shuffled nervously Narby, Zerk chose his next words carefully to preserve moral. It seems we have grossly underestimated certain hazards on Nexus. Our only viable stratagem is immediate withdrawal. But before the fleet could even begin evacuation protocols, an unexpected hail echoed through the warship's interior comm system. Zark froze, then gestured for the audio to be played. A human voice emanated through the bridge, tone casual, but commanding. Leaving so soon. After all the effort your troops spent reaching the planet's surface, it seems a waste not to stay a while. Or at least send down someone to collect their bodies for a proper funeral. Zerk felt his throat sack swell in fury at the audacity and impudence. Who dares address me? He thundered. I am Commander Race of the Interstellar Marine Corps. Your invasion force is in tatters, and your few survivors on Nexus will soon be dead. If I were you, I would take this opportunity to retreat with most of your fleet still intact. Zerk clenched razor-sharp claws in rage. 
momentarily unable to formulate a response, while Klaxith officers awaited his reaction uneasily. Recovering his poise, Zerk gestured to terminate the communication line. On my honor, I will allow one of your shuttle's passage to the surface unharmed, so they can retrieve corpses and account for your dead. Consider it a gesture of respect between warriors. Before Zerk could unleash a blistering condemnation, Reyes signed off. A heavy silence draped the bridge as technicians nervously checked and rechecked scanning systems for signs of human naval assets in nearby space. But only empty void surrounded them. Zerk weighed Reza's offer of safe passage to recoup their fallen. It would confirm just how thoroughly Nexus had become a charnel house for Klaxith invaders. Yet refusal could be perceived as weakness. Ready my personal dropship, the Overlord announced hoarsely. I will descend briefly to assess our losses personally. Crewers hesitated briefly, but knew better than to question the decree. Minutes later, Zerk's sleek assault craft broke formation hurtling towards the still verdant globe below without escort. Anxious eyes tracked its descent from the fleet in high orbit, what carnage awaited their leader planet side. Skimming low over forests and meadows, Zerk searched for any sign of what had wreaked such devastation below. But no impact craters or ruined structures revealed themselves. His shuttle set down lightly in a broad plain where tactical displays had shown one of their primary landing zones established. Atmospheric sensors still stubbornly refused to pinpoint human life signs, though Zerk knew they lurked somewhere below, powering down main engines. He waited under the loading ramp, reluctant to expose himself until he better understood what nightmares had been unleashed. Hissing hydraulics broke the silence as the ramp lowered. Sunlight streamed into the hold. Zerk hesitated, then stepped warily down onto the field's matted grass. Thousands of his soldiers had debarked here mere hours earlier. Now only grisly remnants littered the landscape as far as his quad optics could perceive. Smoldering hulls of gunships and personnel, transports stood wrecked amidst shattered payload crates from aborted supply drops. No structures or fortifications offered clues on what exactly had torn through so many heavily armed Klaxith legionaries. Zerk cautiously approached a mound of corpses. Plasma scores marked shattered carapaces. Sheared limbs and torn wings showed blades had played a vicious role. One warrior's head had almost been pruned from its thorax by a single vicious lateral cut, reaching deeper echoniform nodes enabling higher dimensional perception. Zerk sensed the echoes of violent death still resonating. But the perpetrators remained maddeningly indistinct, their presence seeming to disperse like vapor whenever his psychic focus attempted to isolate them. Nearby foliage rustled almost imperceptibly. Zark instantly pivoted towards the sound, claws flexing as weapon systems screamed for targeting lock. But nothing appeared amidst the trees and brush, only dancing shadows cast by the gently swaying flora and mild breeze. Eyes narrowing, Zerk swept back and forth, seeking traces of his hidden executioners. Come out and face me, he implored them silently. Another sound behind him. Zark spun, talons unfurling to their full razor span. A lone human stood twenty meters away, regarding him calmly. Reflexively, Zerk unleashed his personal plasma arsenal towards the apparition, but faster than neuromuscular impulses could track. The human moved several paces sideways and the salvo seared by. How? No bipe should dodge energy weapons at virtual point-blank range. Yet there the lone human remained, gazing back impassively beneath a matte black helm that obscured all facial features save for two eye-slit lenses reflecting Zark's enraged visage. No identifying insignia marked the figure's tactical armor vest or equipment harness. Zark halted his assault. While obviously formidable, this individual exuded no overt hostility, only silent appraisal. Zark reignited broadcasting nodes, projecting a bestial psychic aura to give the warrior pause. You clase me directly, biped. Your camouflage tricks hint of dishonorable warfare. No reaction came. Zark repeated the demand via shipborne translation systems. Still, the human just stared back inscrutably. Then a separate voice sounded from Zark's left. Another human had approached undetected. Our warriors do not answer to your barbs or taunts, alien. This new arrival wore more distinctive battle dress, admiral insignias, and a subdued silver wrap over the helmet yet carried no visible weapons. We fight on our own terms here, 
as your ruined army discovered. Zerk bristled with indignation even as cold realization dawned no mere planetary militia could have orchestrated such precise and disciplined annihilation. These were undoubtedly Federation veterans, maybe even from the legendary Special Forces Command itself, the Shadow Warriors. Rumor held they launched raids and recon deep in enemy territory, fading away like ghosts when finished, or defended remote human settlements that war algorithms deemed unimportant. Zark shifted warily as more matte black troopers emerged without a sound from the tree line. 815, perhaps twice that number, now ringed the clearing. Hidden in plain sight just moments earlier, he struggled to contain instinct screaming to either flee or attack. The senior officer paused several meters away. Zerk stood frozen, realizing his shuttle remained his only avenue of escape if this meeting went awry. How many human snipers now drew beads upon his skull case? You sought easy slaves here, but Nexus will never bend knee to brigands from above. I cannot allow even a single invader to leave. When your shuttle lifts, it will not reach orbit. Zark dared not move, feeling bloodlust thickening the air as countless eyes sighted along weapon scopes. But the officer wasn't finished. As a professional courtesy, I offer you these final minutes to transmit any messages to your flagship. When Zerk still hesitated, then he continued. Of course, if you prefer attempting to fight free and flee back upwards, you remain free to try. Zerk shuddered involuntarily, realizing he faced his own death or capture here, regardless. But the human seemed genuinely willing to permit him some final communication with his dreadnought, slowly unlimbering a trifold polymet comm link from his harness. He triggered the laser uplink towards where malevolence awaited beyond the clouds and stratosphere. What could he report? A failed invasion and calamitous losses seemed inadequate summaries. This world is not as it seems, Zerk began hoarsely. The human settlement here are not civilians. They move unseen through wild spaces. We never detected them until too late. He swept his gaze back towards Nexus' quiet forest and shining seas that had proven astonishingly lethal. Hubris blinded us. Like enemy we faced fights unlike any other human forces ever encountered. The Admiral nodded almost imperceptibly as Zark's voice trailed off. But his augmented hearing could discern rifle receivers cycling live ammunition nearby. Time had nearly expired. Finality settled around Zark. At least now the Klaxith hierarchy would know Nexus hid vengeful ghosts that defended their new colony world with relentless ruthlessness. And his last glimpse would reveal humanity ascending towards utter apex predator dominance in the galaxy. Zerk turned to face the expressionless commando, preparing to gun him down, forcing himself tall to meet the end with pride if nothing else. Then Zerk's vision exploded into white heat and oblivion claimed him. This seemingly lush and inviting human colony actually camouflaged a lupine pack of elite lethal protectors. And the Empire wanted no further dealings with its new masters 